the history of neurosurgical endoscopy is closely intertwined with that of the treatment of hydrocephalus. The first attempt to remove the choroid plexus in the treatment of communicating hydrocephalus was not performed by a neurosurgeon, but by a courageous urologist from Chicago, Victor Darwin Lespinas, better known for his work on testicular transplantation. Lespinas coagulated the choroid plexus in two children using a pediatric cystoscope in 1910 and reported on this in November 1913. From 1918, Walter Dandy applied the principle of the plexectomy on five patients. In the final case published by Dandy, the nasal retractor used in the first four cases was replaced in 1922 by an open Kelly cystoscope inserted into the ventricles. He was therefore the first to coin the term ventriculostomy. The results of these five interventions were very discouraging, certainly because of the cortical collapse after drainage of the cerebral ventricles. To correct this weakness, Putnam, 12 years later, and then Scarf, introduced underwater coagulation and reported good results thanks to this technical innovation. They were followed by de Raymaker and Feld. However, once the system for shunting the cerebrospinal fluid was introduced in the treatment of communicating hydrocephalus, this intervention was discarded. Again, it was Dandy who, in 1922, conceived the principle of the ventriculostomy by perforation of the floor of the third ventricle in the treatment of non-communicating hydrocephalus, reporting on four cases. On February 6, 1923, Mixter performed this intervention for the first time under endoscopic control using a urethroscope. However, since the illumination was too weak and the endoscopes too large, only very few cases were reported subsequently. Thanks to the work on light sources performed by Forestier and Vulmer at the Institut Optique de Paris in 1954, it proved possible to amplify the illumination of endoscopes while reducing their dimensions. The light source was no longer positioned at the distal end of the endoscope tube, but rather in an external housing. It was thus possible to modify the greatly increased light intensity as required. This technical improvement, which now permitted photo and film records to be made, was utilized by Guillaume in his research concerning the possibilities of a modern endoscope in neurosurgery. From 1963, he reported on his experiences using the endoscope in ventriculostomy, puncture of colloid cysts, and in endoscopic control of rhinoceptal operations on pituitary adenomas. In addition, he investigated the importance and benefit of biportal endoscopic access. Gérard Guillaume may rightfully be considered a pioneer in modern neurosurgical endoscopy. Here we have a view of the interventricular foramen of Munro through the endoscope. And in the next sequence, we can make out a colloid cyst on the same foramen.